guys and gals, friends of YouTube, Love to Fly Helis here. We are back for part five, uh, building this uh, Cadet LT40 trainer. But before I get started here, just wanted to give my buddy Jason a shout out. Uh, Jason is the friend that sent me this plane to build for him uh, so he can follow along. And we're almost done. He's keeping right up with me. And he is doing a fantastic job on his. He's he's just really, I'm just amazed for his first plane. He has done so well. Um, he hasn't posted any videos yet, but he I think he said he was going to some of the build. Anyway, uh, Jason's new to the hobby, kind of new to YouTube. Uh, he's trying to get into doing some more videos and stuff. He loves the great outdoors and hiking and, and uh, camping and stuff and, and flying. He's getting into RC. He has been flying uh, a couple of electrics on his own here now for a little while, so he's doing pretty good. Anyway, uh, I will put the link at the bottom of this, or I'll, I'll put his channel name here, and then I'll put a link in the uh, description box on this video. Give Jason a, ha a holler someday and just visit with him or, or check out some of his videos. He's only got a few right now, but he's, he's trying to get some more in there and make some new friends, and he's a great, great guy. We have been very good friends now for quite a while. Uh, anyway, his channel name is Bushwalker. It's capital B-U-S-H, capital W-A-L-K-E-R. And I will put that link, but for anybody that just wants to look it up, just type in your search on YouTube, Bushwalker channel, and it'll pull it right up. His will be the first one at the top. He'll have a little yellow icon, a thumbnail over at the left. It'll be yellow with a little curled up snake that says, don't tread on me. So give Jason a shout. and. Uh, uh, give him some views and help him get started on his YouTube channel and videos and stuff. He's a great guy. And also had a request for Gopher. Uh, he loves Gopher as much as I do, I think. But uh, he wanted to see more of Gopher and some other people ask about him. So here's Gopher. He's my little buddy, long-haired dachshund. He's eight years old. I've had him a year, uh, almost a year. We rescued him. He, he lived a horrible, horrible life his first seven years in a three-by four foot wire cage he'd never touched the ground uh we have made so much progress he is he is just as happy as he can be now he loves the great outdoors he's not afraid of the ground anymore and uh, not much afraid of anything really but uh he's a happy little guy but he's my buddy he goes everywhere with me and uh camping and and uh to the flying field all the time but uh anyway there you go jason there's little gopher He's my helper. He lays right here in the floor, usually either under my table or over here to the left. He lays in the floor curled up all day when I'm back here. He stays right by my side wherever I'm at. So he's a great little guy. <laughs> all right, let's get started on this build. Okay, boys and girls, uh, we're back to part five here. And we're going to install the linkage. We're going to put the linkage together and install the linkage to the rudder and the elevator on this. And then after that, all we like is cutting out the cowl, and I'll see how much time this takes up. I'll probably just do this part in one section and do the cowl in a separate section, hoping to keep them a little shorter. But uh, And then all we need to do is balance it. But uh, anyway, uh, we're, you're going to need your two long plastic tubes out of the box, and there's two pieces of it. There'll be four pieces of uh, this rod, and it's threaded on one end. And we're going to do things a little bit different than what the book calls for. Um, let me see. Let me refresh this right quick. Uh, find where it says about the tubes. Well, I lost it here. Hang on just a second. Fuel tank. Yeah. Well, must be over here. Yeah, here it is. Um, it shows to what they're the way they're doing it is they they stick one of these wires down inside this tube and you can feed it down in there it's it's kind of stiff but you can get it pushed in there all the way and anyway this tube will end up going inside of a hard a rigid tube inside the plane so it won't flex once it's inside that tube anyway the difference we're going to do uh well, we are we are going to put this in here on the tail end, but what we're going to do on the uh, servo end is we're going to do backwards. We're going to 
going to screw the threaded end in and then cut this off because we're using quick connects on the servo arms so uh, we don't need the clevis on both ends just one end <coughs> and the quick connects just make for a lot faster adjustments and easier to adjust fine tuning and stuff so what you'll need uh, we've got our ball driver for our hex nut bolt on our um, quick connects you're going to need a pair of needle nose to hold onto that so when you tighten it down with this you'll need a sharp razor knife to cut the tubes uh, maybe a pair of tweezers and we're probably going to need a little pair of vice grips which I'm going to use right now uh, I think I'm going to have to get me a bite on this to screw it in here yeah okay yeah with that you can hold the plastic tube pretty good and this will allow you to thread that into that. I think I'm holding it. Yeah, it's going. If you have to get a hold of the tube with a pair of pliers, be careful and uh, don't don't uh, let it damage your your plastic. It's getting really really tight. I want to try to get this thread all the way down in there if I can. Um, wow, really going to be hard to do. It's twisting in my hand now. I don't know if I can hold that without damaging or not. Maybe as far as I can get it in there. Um, golly. Yeah, it's going a little bit farther. Anyway, that's, that's stout. There's no way you're going to be able to pull that out of there. So... Um, Let's get both ends of this put together, and then we'll work on the back end. Kind of hard to get it started. Once you get started, it'll it'll thread. I'll clamp my vice grips on there again if I can. Well, get back a little farther. There we go. And we're going to thread this one in there as far as we can get it to go. The way they do it on theirs, they thread this in the opposite direction and then put a clevis on each end. And then you have to cut this very precise. This way I'm doing it is a much easier way and you don't have to be quite as precise on your length. You don't want to get it too short by any means. Uh, but I mean you could get regular linkage and I have a whole stack of regular wire linkage over here in the corner. But I'm going to go ahead and do this because it came with the kit and people are going to want to see how to do this. So. Uh, you can kind of kink that right there and give you a little bit of a hold on it to crank this down even farther. That works pretty good. So we're getting it there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go back and screw the other one down a little bit farther. We do not want this coming loose, but I don't think there's any way you're ever going to pull that out of here. Okay. Uh, we got that one screwed in uh, over halfway, about three quarters of the threads. Let me go back and do this other one, get it down a little bit farther, and by this being pliable plastic, you can fold it in your hand here and kink it and keep it from twisting on you, but that'll let that thread in there a little bit farther. So, all right, that's about three-quarter in so we're good now um, we know we got to determine how much we got to cut off so what I want to do is turn this around and I want to try to get the camera angle while wow, this is going to be a little difficult whoops for you to see let me see if I can set this off the edge of the table and hold it right here now, let me see if I can get my camera on it. Alright, you can see the hole right here for the rudder uh, tube. And that plastic hard tube inside is glued all the way back to here so it's solid. So we're going to feed the metal end in. Till we, get, we don't want to cut it off yet until we know exactly what we need. So let's feed that in. And let's straighten our... And I'm going to go... I'm just going to push it on up past the control horn, kind of get an idea of what we need. And then 
what we'll try to do is measure this to see how much we're going to need to put that, that clevis on here. And we will wait and cut that off at the very last till we get this hooked up and make sure we've got everything. So we actually have got lots of slack here. We've got plenty of extra tube. Uh, so I'm going to I've got an extra three or four inches in there, so I'm going to cut this off about right there. I'm going to mark it and hold it with my hand, pull it back out. Now, I don't want to let go of it, but let me get my plane back up here so it don't fall on the floor. It's a pretty good sized plane, so all right, I'm going to lay this on a hard surface. I'm going to take my razor knife. Be careful, don't cut yourself with this. It's pretty, pretty stout stuff find my hole again. Hope you guys can see this. Wow. There we go. Got it cut. Alright, we got a little extra tube here. We'll keep that for spare for something else. Now, what we're going to do on this end of it is we're going to slide the rod in the way the book calls for. You may have to take your razor knife and just slightly kind of wallow out the end a little bit where we cut it. We're going to stick the slick end in, leave the threaded end at the back. We're going to put that, feed that down in there. Now we're going to thread this into the tube like that. Um, well, here's the deal: you don't want to damage your thread, so you can wrap uh, a little paper towel around it or something to kind of protect it. So I'm going to. put that out here on the end and I'm going to clamp my vice grips down on that. Loosen it just a little. Okay, now should be able to twist that. There we go. It's threading right into that tube. So we want to thread this in quite a ways. Alright, let's see what we got. There we go. All right, we've got threaded in. We've got just all oh, close to a half, not quite a half inch sticking out. Uh, now we're going to take on this end. This is the tail end. We're going to put one of their clevises on here. We're going to screw it on. Uh, now this plane did not come with uh, the little fuel tubing pieces for, that comes puts on here. You know to put on here for a safety. So we're going to make our own. Uh, we want to screw this down. You're not going to make any adjustments back here once you get this on, so you can screw it all the way down to the plastic tube. All the threads in there. And just butt it right up against the tubing, and you should have uh, just a little, oh, couple millimeters of thread sticking out inside here. You want it to come all the way through, so be sure and leave that much out of your big tube when you screw it in. Okay, let me grab a piece of fuel tube right quick. Let's see, I might have something. This might work better. And what we're going to do is just cut some little pieces. I guess, you know, if I use the sharp end of the blade, it'll cut a lot better. I wonder if that's what I was doing on the other. <laughs> well, we're going to cut two of them, and we're just going to make them about that long, about two millimeters long. Now what we're going to do is take a very small pair of needle nose long skinny nose and we're going to stick that up on there. I could have put this on first but this will show you how to do this too. And then take and spread that out and stick it up over your clevis and then for now we're just going to slide it back down here on to the little shaft part of it and then once we clip this up then we'll slide it up here where that can't come apart. Okay, let's do the other one right quick. Get it ready. Um, let's see, it's going to be approximately the same length, so, you know what, I think just, well, yeah, it'll be, so the servo arms are the same distance. Let me see where it comes out back here. Oh, it comes out the middle. That's right, this is kind of a different, oops, it's kind of a different plane. The elevator uh, uh, rod, I don't know if you can see this, the, the hole in the fuselage, it's, it comes out the very center right here and hooks up. So, 
what we're going to do on that is I can stick this up here by hand and if I go all the way to the front of the cabin up here I know I've got plenty of length so we will cut that off leave enough length on here I've got my I've got it pinched in my fingers where I want to cut it and like I say the way we're doing it we do not have to be just deadly accurate we've got several inches here uh, to play with so okay got that one cut off now we're gonna kind of hone out the end of it again now we're gonna take our other straight piece put the non threaded end in first stick that way down in there let's take our little piece of paper towel again and we'll clip the vice grips out here toward the end of the rod so we have plenty of room okay let's thread that in there there we go we'll just make it the same distance as the other one now I'm going to have to kink this one again there we go it's going alright we got about the same amount screwed in there we didn't damage our threads and if you did a little bit it's not real real critical because it's screwing into plastic but if it were going to metal yeah it would be a big difference now at this point we we can actually stick this on from the back side our safety ring and uh, let's see I can get this out here okay we're gonna screw that again all the way down to the plastic sheath linkage and we'll have a little bit sticking out inside the clevis which is what we want there comes the end of it okay there you go same thing as the other one we got just a tiny bit coming out about a millimeter or two a couple millimeters and uh, this will be our tail end okay now what we need to do we can actually lay these aside for now this that one um, let me get this stuff out of the way here I don't lose anything. I'll lay my tools over here. Okay, now let me get this turned around and see if I can get this in a way to where I can show you guys. I'm not going to be able to show you up inside here. It's going to be a hard angle to get to. So, what I'm going to do is take the long metal end and we're going to, in, inside the hole, inside here there's you can see the tube up in there we want to get this started into that tube there we go now the rest of it should just once you get to the plastic part you may have to kind of wiggle it turn it a little bit but there it goes so we're going to feed that through and we're hitting the cabin up there but we can we'll move that in a minute um anyway we do we know that you we want so i can get this camera up here we want the control horn right right in the dead center right here okay so let me see they're in a baggie right here <coughs> now it's very important how you mount this control horn let me get this down here it's very important all right the all right, look at the the hinge line all right, you've got your hinge line right there between your elevator and the uh, stab. And what you want is you want this line of uh, holes. Let me get something here. This will work. You want this line of holes 90 degrees straight up and down right above that hinge line. You don't want it too far forward or too far back because if you do, then when it moves, it's going to bind. You want it right on that hinge line. Uh, so be sure when you mount this that these these line of holes right here are in line with the hinge line. <coughs> so uh, let's see if I can get this on here. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to, let me get my drill out first. Uh, let's see, we got, yeah, we got, these have a back plate that goes on the other side. Uh, the top part of the elevator so I'm gonna get a drill bit that will fit through here we don't want to make our hole any bigger that's a little too big let's see 
I think this one will work. Yeah, this is about right. We're gonna get our, our little handy dandy railby drill out. Whatever kind of drill you got, that's fine. You just you just need one that's variable speed and well, this is a two speed, but you can use variable speed and you want one with the clutch on it so you can set your uh, tension on your screws. Alright, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move this for just a minute. I'm gonna get this in line with I want my elevator flat and straight. So I'm gonna get it right in line. The holes lined up with the hinge line, and I'm gonna center that. Check it again, make sure I'm right right over that. Go back just a hair. Um, elevator square. Alright, I am right over it. So now I'm gonna drill and keep it steady. I'm gonna drill my first hole. Try to go as straight as you can, but you need to go all the way through. Okay, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put a screw through this and up through that hole. Now, it's snug enough, it's gonna kinda stay there. So now what we wanna do is make sure that it's not twisted. We want it square, 90 degrees. Okay, we're good there. Keep my thumb out of the way if I can. I'm gonna drill the second hole all the way through and we're gonna put our screw in that. There we go, come on, go all the way through, buddy. Ah, there we get. All right, we got our screws in the bottom and they're they're holding because the hole's just the right size for the screws. Now we're gonna go back up on the top side and you can see the, see the screws sticking out. Well, that's where this little flat plate goes. So, we need a very small screwdriver. Uh, I believe this will work. And what I'm gonna do is hold this up here with my fingers get the holes lined up right over the screws I'm trying to show you both sides <laughs> not sure how this is working Tear it up and slowly start threading once that one side takes then go to the other side don't screw one side all the way down it'll be real hard for them to thread now these went perfectly in line go back and forth and do a little on this one and a little on that one okay uh, until they're snug down flat or your your caps down flat against the elevator Okay, we're almost there, a little more. The end of your screw should just come right level almost with the top of that plastic cap. All right, good and snug, nice and tight. Okay, now at uh, this point, we can actually hook, let me get the camera back up here. Uh, let me get this pried back apart here. Get my little cap, there we go. All right, we're gonna go in the. Eh, we don't need a lot of throw on this. Let me see what the book calls for, but I think we might use the second hole. You don't want a lot of heavy throw on this because it is a trainer. So uh, it's supposed to be gentle and docile. Let's see where it shows the elevator. Oh, here it is. Yeah, they're using the uh, outside hole, so the that's less throw. The closer you go to the surface, the more throw you're going to have. In other words, what that means is your elevator is going to move more. Uh, so, you, and you can tune that down in your radio too, but you don't want this plane real heavy throws because it's a trainer. So, uh, we're going to use the outside hole. Now on some acrobatic hot rod plane, you're probably going to go in a couple holes and you're going to have a big long arm on your servo. 3D planes will have real short horns back here and long arms on their uh, servos so they can make that surface just, I mean, really move, you know, as far as it'll go. Um, now we're going to take our little peel, pair of needle nose and we're going to slide. You can do it with your fingers too. But we're going to slide that up, that rubber deal. Hope you can see it. Now you don't want it right up against the control horn. You, what you want to do is move that now and make sure you don't have it too close that it binds. So now we've got plenty of throw, it's not binding at all. That little rubber piece of hose on there will keep this clevis from snapping apart, which it probably won't anyway, but that's to just ensure it. Okay, we've got that one in. Now let me turn it around this way, see so if I can do this without knocking everything off the table 
All right, this one is easy to thread through because it's right here on top. So we're gonna thread that through there. Okay, uh, and the reason I'm putting this in now is because I wanna see right where that control horn needs to go as far as height wise up and down on the elevator. You don't wanna get it too high and then this be in a bind pulling up or pulling down. You want this straight out of that tube. So that's where your control horn needs to be. So, uh, I'm gonna tip this down here now and try to hold it down on the table. Hopefully you guys can see this. And there again, I get my drill handy. I want to get this, I'm gonna try to hold it on the bottom. And I hope you can kind of see this, but I want it right in line to where that tube is coming out, but I also want my holes lined up with the center uh, hinge point of this. So, we want to get that perfectly lined up and right in line to where the clevis is so we don't put this in a bind, okay? Now, this is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to drill this left-handed. I'm not real good left-handed. I'm going to try to get it as straight as I can and hopefully don't go through the other side and poke my finger. Be very careful. Keep your fingers out of the way. All right, now let's put the first bolt in there, and the reason we're doing that is because it'll help hold this stable so you don't let it slide and get your holes off. Find the hole in the, there we go. I'm going to push this all the way through, and then we'll, that way, then we can hold it center and squared, and then uh, drill our other hole. So we're still over our hinge line, that's good. Keep your finger out of the way on the other side. You don't want to drill through it and hit it. It'll hurt, I tell you. Okay. Now we'll put this bolt. This one's a little harder to get to because you you got this in your way down here. My big old hands will be kind of hard. There we go. All right, got them in there. Now they're just pushed through the other side. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with that cap. I'm going to get my little screwdriver here. And I'm going to have to do this kind of left-handed, I guess. And same thing, I'm going to hold my cap over here, line the holes up on the other side. Just kind of hold it in the middle. Now, I'm going to start one of them, if it'll take. Okay, it took. Start the other one. Very good. Perfect. If you get your holes drilled crooked, sometimes the bolt will be just slightly off on the other side from your hole and, and you have to kind of wallow it a little bit but these went through perfect I, I did good eyeballing it I'm not usually that lucky on all of them okay all right let's get them snug down good don't over tighten them you'll squeeze into the covering too much so you just want them nice and snug and flat on both sides against the rudder or your control surface whichever one you're doing okay there we go uh, nice and snug and now we can do the same thing here I'll pull this out a little ways and unhook this <clears throat> and I didn't look but we want quite a bit of elevator so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the outside hole on this as well I'm pretty sure that's what the book is gonna go for so okay and we're gonna snap those together and I might see if I can use my fingers and just push that rubber hose. Okay, there we go. We want to move that back and forth to make sure your rubber safety loop is not going to bind too bad on your uh, control. We're not going to have that much throw on this rudder, so it's plenty. Just, uh, I don't know if you can see how far up is there. So we're not quite halfway up on the clevis, but anyway, just use your judgment on that and you'll get it. All right, we've got that end all hooked up. <clears throat> now, <coughs> excuse me, let me... Uh, move my camera around so I can get a different angle on the inside and we'll hook them up to the servos on the inside. Be right back. Okay, let's try this again and see if I can keep from deleting anything. Alright, I've got my radio. We're going to turn it on. Give it just a second to everything initialize. Then we're going to turn the plane on. Let everything in here center up. Make sure we're on. Okay, now I'm going to take a couple of these big clamps. I'm going to put one on the elevator and one on the rudder to hold it centered. And put it on the rudder in between the 
uh, rudder in the uh, vertical fin and that way it holds it solid but anyway we've got our radio on got that you can see where the tubes come up through here we've got our quick connects here uh, first thing I want to do is find my little tool and I want to loosen matter of fact we can take the screw out because we're going to put Loctite on it so I'm going to take my screw out and leave it there um, find my Loctite what have I done with it there okay if this one will work, hopefully. No, nope, that's I think that's an empty one. Let me get a new one here. There we go. It's working. We'll get that ready. Now, um, what we want, we've got everything centered, so that's where the rod's going to go in that. What we're going to do is leave ourselves about a quarter of an inch of slack when we cut this off. Um, I did not get my big cutters out. And it's hard to get down inside here. I, my hands are real weak from that crappy surgery I had. But anyway, um, let's do this. Let's take a marker because when you raise it up, it's going to throw you off. All right, we want about a quarter of an inch of slack at least. But you don't want enough sticking out to where it's going to hit anything. All right, now we're going to pull that up here. And we're going to cut it off. Hang on to this end when you do that. I got it cut halfway through. I don't even have the strength to to bend that. Okay. Now, uh, this is the rudder. So now what I'm going to do is take my clamp off the rudder back here. And I'm going to pull it back as far as it will go. So I can stick that through the hole in my quick connect. There we go. Now I'm going to put my clamp, clamp back on my rudder to make sure it's held center. Okay. Alright, at this point we're going to put our screw back in this. So we want to put some Loctite on it. Get it centered up on my tool here. Alright, let's put that in there. Okay, now you want your needle nose to get a hold of the quick connect. You do not want to twist it, break it, or break, bend your wire. Hold that nice and tight. Sense that down really good onto that, okay? Now we'll take the clamp off of that one. we got rudder and steering. And now this, like I said before in an earlier video, this is just laying in here temporary for now, the receiver and the battery. Uh, the battery is the last thing we'll mount because we've got to get the wing on it and see where the center of gravity is. I just have it laying there so I can use it. There we go. Now when you first set these up, everything's going to be at 100%. Your radio is automatically 100%. So when we get all the other one hooked up, we'll go into the book and we'll set the throws and turn this thing down a little bit. So Because we definitely don't want 100% throws on a trainer right now. That's a lot of rudder. <laughs> okay, same thing on the... Uh, Elevator. Let's take the nut out or the bolt, whatever you want to call it. We'll just leave it attached to that. Same thing. We want to lay our rod right up here on top of it. Leave a quarter of an inch of slack. Okay. Then we're going to pull it up here. This is the hardest stuff to cut. <laughs> Not much danger of it popping off. If you've got strength to pop it off of there, this will fly across the room and stick in something. That's why I said to hold it. I don't have to worry about that because I can't get it all the way through. But uh, my hands are very, very weak. Uh, anyway, same thing. Let's take the clamp off. We'll push this back. And get our hole lined up here. I can't see nothing in there with my big old hands in the way. Now I'm going to take the rudder back there and push it up through there. Now I'm going to put my clamp back on. Or I said rudder, I meant elevator, I'm sorry. Okay, now we have the elevator linkage in there. And your radio's on so everything's centered. We've got our clamps back there so everything's centered. But if you have to do any fine tuning on this, then you don't have to undo the clevises and unscrew them or screw them. Because the more you do that, the more it loosens them up. This way with a quick connect, all you have to do is loosen this and you can slide that rod. It makes it very handy, very simple to do. And as long as you lock tight these, I have been flying for eight years. I have these on every plane I own and I have never had one come loose, ever. 
Uh, I've heard people say they didn't like them because they're afraid they'll come loose or they have come loose. Well, if they came loose on them, then they did not have Loctite on them because I've never had one come loose. There again, uh, needle nose, cinch her down good, and take the clamp off. Remember to take the clamp off before you work your radio. There you go. We got elevator. Everything's working smoothly. Okay, we, we left just enough. It's not hitting the throttle arm, which we wanted. We don't want anything to hit each other or bind, so... And, of course, that won't be going that far either. That's 100%. We're going to tone that down. So, Okay, that's how you hook that up. Um, I guess we can uh, go ahead and set the throws on the elevator and rudder for right now. Um, and then we'll do the ailerons after we put the wing on it later. But I'll show you how to do it on this. Let me turn the camera off for a minute and get things moved around here. I'm trying to set this camera up where you can see everything, but it's kind of hard to do. Um, anyway... Uh, if you do not have one of these, you can use a ruler. You just set your plane level on the table and then measure from the table surface up to and just find the center point of that and then set it however much it says, you know, a quarter of an inch either way. But this is real handy uh, to use. I believe it's a Great Plains throw meter is what it's called. It's got little rubber cushions on it and it has uh, millimeters on one side and inch uh, on the other side. So, let's see what the men, most manuals give you inches and millimeters, some just give you millimeters. Let's go in here and find where the throws are. Um, well, let's see here. Well, they're not going to show us. Should be back here somewhere. Receiver, receiver pack. Oh, there's a balance point. Well, this is crazy. It doesn't show. Usually there's a chart in here that shows what your throws are. Here on push rods. Go on back over here. I do not see any throws on this. Well, this is nuts. <clears throat> huh. Alright. Yeah, there is nowhere in here. This is crazy. Where it shows how to set the uh, control throws. Usually it will tell you, you know, a quarter of an inch up or down on elevator, on low rates, uh, you know, five sixteenths or whatever on high rates. There is absolutely nothing in this book. Make sure I'm not overlooking it here. Elevator push rod. Push rods. Wow. This is the first book. Well, no, it's the second one I've ever seen. It does not give the control throws and I do not give us a balance point but no throws okay we're on our own oh wait 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 here it is on the very back now that's weird I've never seen it on the back page it's always in the book uh, here's your recommended control surface travel I knew it had to be in there somewhere <clears throat> okay elevator uh, it actually doesn't even give high rates or low rates so we're gonna set what they're calling for on low rates and we're going to go ahead and set some high rates for our own use later on so when you progress whoever's training on it we can turn it up a little bit and make it a little quicker a little snappier so we're going to do the low rates elevator shows nine sixteenths of an inch up or down so we're going to use the inch side because it doesn't give millimeters we want to slide this up on the wing on the surface I'll try to keep from knocking this off I've got the front end propped up on a box now I'm looking from the side here and I'm, I'm getting my zero point you just slide these around, leave it, leave this part back about a quarter of an inch from the surface so it doesn't hit it, but get your zero point lined up right with the center of it by scooting these tips back and forth. Okay, we're lined up, and we're going to see what we've got. We've got uh, seven eighths almost, that's a lot. So what did it say? Nine sixteenths. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a... A mark over your half inch. Alright, we're way too much. 
Okay, let's go into dual rates on your radio. Hit enter. We want to highlight and change it to elevator. Okay, and we're going to go down. Make sure your switches are forward. On this radio, you have to assign your switches, so they're they're not set yet. But anyway, make sure they're all forward for low. Forward should be low. Back should be high. All right, we got elevator. We're going to go down to the rate. Highlight that. We are going to turn this down. What we'll do, I can hold my elevator stick, and I can click this down until it goes to 9 sixteenths. All right, there we go. Got 9 sixteenths up. We got nine sixteenths down. Okay, that's our low rate. Now we want to unhighlight that, drop down to Expo, put a little bit of Expo in this. Expo on a Futaba radio is negative. You go to the negative side, JR Spectrum, you, and I think High Tech, you go to the positive side. I know you do on JR Spectrum, but on, and this High Tech is set up like a Futaba. So we need to go negative on the Expo. Uh, we got 67% on our travel. So we're going to go highlight that. We're going to go negative, oh, like 18%. We'll try that. All that this Expo, what it does, it, it kind of softens up your stick movements toward the center. In other words, when, you're, when your elevator comes back toward the middle, it makes it a little bit smoother rather than kind of popping back when you get to the end of it there. Uh, so it, it just kind of, a new flyer, you're not going to notice probably the difference, but eventually you'll start noticing but you can set whatever you need to but we're going to start out with 18 okay now we're going to unhighlight that we're going to go down and we're going to assign a switch most radios the elevator dual rate switch is here the aileron is here and the rudder is here and that's the way i like them because i'm used to doing that for years that's what i've done now you can assign all of these in most digital radios to one switch uh, bill likes his all on this switch right here he puts everything on this one right here and so when you put it on high rates, then all three surfaces, ailerons, rudder, and elevator, are all on high rates. I like mine separate because the way I fly, there's certain things I do that I only want my elevator on high, but not my ailerons or whatever. So anyway, uh, let's assign a switch. So once I get it on, in this particular radio, uh, you just flip the switch, and that assigns it for you. But in other radios, you have to actually pick it and whatever. So it just depends on your radio what you have. Jason, I'm not real sure on yours. Yours probably, uh, I know on Spectrum, they come automatically from the factory set up with these three switches. And I think your Futaba probably is the same way. So you may not have to assign a switch unless you want to put them all on one switch. But I'm pretty sure Futaba and JR and Spectrum come factory uh, elevator, aileron, rudder. I'm almost certain. But this little tactic, you have to assign the switches. Okay, we got that done. Now, we're going to hit escape for that one, and we're going to go back up. We're going to highlight, and we're going to pick rudder. Well, wait a minute. we got to go set the high rate. Sorry. All right. Elevator. Let's see. High rates are on 100%. Here's our difference. You can see that there's low, or there's, uh, low rates, high rates. Low rates, high rates. We're just going to leave the high on 100% right now, but I do need to go down and set some expo. And you do not have to sign a switch on this. It's already assigned, so we're going to go negative. We got 100% throw, so we're going to go negative probably about 28%. And see, We'll start right there and see how that works. Okay, now we're going to go back up. Highlight, switch to rudder. Okay, we'll go down to one. Make sure our switch is forward. Now we're going to move this to the rudder. Now I'm going to have to stand up. I'm going to try to get this up here where you can kind of see what I'm doing. But I will have to stand up to look down on this. Same thing. We want to get it. This rudder is kind of warped. That's weird. Huh. A little bit of warp in it. We're going to center that up. Get it where it won't slide down on us. Okay, and the rudder is uh, one inch left and right. So, get my radio over here where I can see it. And we're at an inch and a quarter left and right. So what we're going to do is tone that down a little bit. Alright, we're going to go down. Down. 
until we get it's almost okay we're not too far hang on a minute one inch there we go we got one inch all right now we're gonna go down and set expo in that we're at 79 cent 79 percent on the throw so we're gonna i don't know go around 18 19 percent expo and try that we may go back in and adjust it later now we need to assign this to a switch rudder and it's going to be this bottom over here on this radio now we've got the switch assigned Let's see, wait, I haven't signed it yet. i got to go down one. Okay, now, highlight that. Now I'll choose the switch. Okay. Now we're going high rates, and we're just going to leave it where it was. So here's the difference. Not a whole lot on your rudder. Very little. But anyway, you don't want it oversteering because the steering the wheel in front is connected to this. And here's the reason that back in the earlier video that we used a, a little bit uh, closer in hole because we wanted... You know, plenty of steering, but not overdo it on the wheel, as it'll get you know it'll, it'll track fun and get out of your hands real quick going down the, the runway. But the way we got it set up, this thing should track pretty straight, and we'll fine tune it at the field with our trims. All right, we got that. Now we got to do. Uh, oh, I had it backwards. Doggone it! So 79. Let me go back up. I had the switch in the wrong position. Alright, okay, expo, 18, now go back to the high rate, highlight that and go back to 100%, okay, and we'll go to about 28, 29% expo on that. Now your expo is different, different radios, so uh, for the most part. But like I said, Futaba is negative. Go to the negative side, Jason. And on JR and Spectrum, you go to the positive side. The tactic radios are set up like a Futaba, so you go to the negative side. Okay, we've got those two set now. Well, we've got low and high rates, which is not a whole lot of different. So, uh, we're good to go on that. And we got our elevator, low rates, high rates. There we go. Okay. Uh, now that this part is done, we are down to cutting the cow and balance. This takes a little time. You got to do it pretty slow working on that cow. So I'm going to go ahead and end this segment right here uh, at this point. And. Um, we will come back for part six will be the finish and we'll cut the cowl out and put it on and then mount the battery and everything we'll figure out where the battery goes because we'll have to put the wing on it to balance it and we'll lay the battery on the outside to kind of get an idea where it's going to go hopefully it'll fit right in that little tray where it's at but if not i'll have to make something to mount it with a little tray back there so all right we're going to end this one at this point and uh, uh stay tuned for part six for mounting the cowl uh battery and balancing and we're done and then the next one will be the maiden flight thanks for watching